Hello there. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Business. My name is Mark Bullock. I'm the co-founder of PhoneBlogger.net, VideoSocials.net, and our new Video Interview Podcast Services, or VIP Services, all of which is where we facilitate marketing services and systems for professional service firms, including attorneys, financial professionals, coaches, and consultants. Every episode, I interview business thought leaders who make a difference in the world through their services, their products, or their ideas. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, of course, and more. Today, my guest I'm very excited to have is Tommy D or Tommy DeMisa. And Tommy is the director of Strategic Alliances and a partner in the employee benefits firm Vanguard Benefits. And today we'll be discussing how he got involved in the nonprofit sector. But welcome, Tommy. It's great to have you. I'm thrilled to be here, Mark. I'm a big Mark Bullock fan, as you probably know already. And I'm also a big Hawaiian shirt guy. You, you, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that during the week because I'm always a shirt and tie guy. And and it is, uh, it's warm out today. So I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the secret is lacrosse shorts and a shirt and tie. The Mark, I, was even, I was even in Dunkin' Donuts earlier this week and I had Adidas pants on and a shirt and tie. And some guy who I never met before is like, bro, bro, I got to take a picture of you. I got So like I'm in the Dunkin' Donuts and the guy's like, they, they, not even a selfie because he wasn't even in it. He just took a picture of me because he had, the, you know, untucked white shirt, crisp white shirt, tie and Adidas pants. And so that's kind of the style. But I love the Hawaiian shirt. I'm a big fan. I wear, on the weekends, I wear Kikui Nuts. And and uh, Hawaii. You didn't, I don't know if you knew that. I know I, we we talked about Hawaii, but I never lived there. Mm. But I, I like to mentally go there. I've been there on vacation. I like to mentally go uh -huh. there on the weekend. So I realized with like one or two buttons closed and the kukui nuts that I'm actually mentally on vacation. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at work anymore. But then again, if I look down at the shorts right now, I'm not sure if I'm at work or, or on vacation <laughs> right this second anyway. But I'm thrilled to be here. I've always been a big fan of yours, all the stuff we've done with video socials. You know, I've been involved with video socials from really, I think, the beginning of what you guys have done there. And I joke Absolutely. about it in terms of I say – you know, video socials that helped me come out of my shell, which is kind of tongue in cheek because I never really needed the help coming out of my shell. But it was more like I would never go on anybody's podcast or radio show in the past. And now, as we'll probably get into today, I have two and I shoot videos with you and our group uh, every week at video social. So, you know, it's it's kind of funny how we evolve and what a 38, 39 year old man is versus this 44 year old man. It's just a different different man I, I mean i'll tell you one of my co-hosts on uh, on one of the shows i do she had asked me about six years ago to come on her podcast i said absolutely not i don't want to hear my own voice being recorded <laughs> now it's all i do man so so it's kind of funny but that's my way of saying thank you for having me on the show i'm glad to be here well i couldn't i couldn't be more delighted because i mean you're a poster child for just what you can do once you come out of your shell right because we're, we're all in a shell one way or another right relative, so it's right it's relatively it, speaking it, right it, it, yeah. exactly so you know in in my case um you know i was uh, president of the toastmasters club you know 35 40 years ago so i've got lots of experience speaking in front of a live audience right but not on camera until we created video socials and of course now i'm you know hundreds and hundreds of videos into uh, to doing that. But that only came about because I was willing to practice and I was willing to come out of my shell and, and had the support of um, the other members that, 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 that are involved. So um, terrific. So yeah. I want to transition though, because you're a little different than almost anybody else that I'm probably going to be interviewing for my show. Wow. And, and, wow. and yeah, what, that's a good thing. I hope that's a good I, thing. I think it's, I think it's a phenomenal thing. And because inspiring business is about, um, you know, coming from a, perp a place of a purpose coming from, you know, really expanding and, and, and growing your passion and sharing that with the world and that changes everything. That changes how you market your business. That changes how you interact with your clients. That changes how you, how you, how you interact with with the people that that you know. And I know that you have a passion that's not just for a specific nonprofit, but is for a bunch of different nonprofits. And so I'd love for you to to talk for a minute about how you became so involved in the nonprofit uh, sector, and as how you have now become the nonprofit sector connector. Well. <laughs> 
I got to chuckle every time I hear somebody say the nonprofit sector connector because it's a thing I started saying. And then it's a thing how people introduce me as the nonprofit sector connector, which was, as I started saying, it was sort of bold, but I am sort of bold. And, and like you said, you know, different than a lot of people. Let me, if I go back, when I go back and try and explain how things all came together for this pretty cool opportunity that I have in, in, in this place and time is I go back about seven years ago and I had sat down with my two business partners at the Vanguard agency and, and now, now, uh, known as Vanguard Benefits, and I knew I knew Ed and Vinny for um, I know them now for about 18, 19 years. So at the time, I guess it was eleven years or something like that. And we always talked about you know having some level of of uh, connection and partnership in the business and whatnot. I came I grew up working at ADP and payroll sales, and I did a lot of work around uh, outsourced HR sales and always in the sales arena or in the sales profession. Actually, I've probably been selling since I'm four or five years old, you know, and then I was a bartender for a long time, which is, is selling as well. Although everybody sort of likes your product, they came into the store looking for it, but, <laughs> but um, it probably doesn't shock you that I, I spent a lot of time uh, in the bar, behind the bar, not behind bars, Mark, but behind a bar, <laughs> right? And um, I, I, I did that for a long time. And, and then, you know, like, as I say, worked, worked at ADP and the payroll sales. I sat down with Ed and Vinny when we were finally ready to figure out if the timing was right. And, we, we discussed who are the clients we really like working with, who are the clients we want to serve more, who are the clients that we feel a, a genuine connection to. And I remember it, it was the week between that week between Christmas and New Year's where it's kind of like a slow week around the world, you know, business wise. So I remember we had like a four hour lunch, which um, I haven't had one of those in a long time, but I used to have four hour lunches where you just kind of sit back and relax. And this particular lunch we talked about, we really appreciate the work the nonprofit sector is doing. So I, I got to tell you, though, looking back, I don't even know if we really knew what that all would mean going forward. But we said, let's focus on that. Let's focus on adding value to the sector. So what I did is I started getting connected to people in the nonprofit sector. I started joining boards. I started getting involved with shout out to my friend Ken Serini, who's a great guy who founded the Long Island Imagine Awards and now the New York City Imagine Awards. You know, Ken was a guy I looked to as a relationship i wanted to have meaning he was somebody i wanted to do business with and have some some sort of alliance with but he's also a guy that i looked to and said this this man is really doing a lot for these nonprofits. i want to watch what he's doing and i've now you know we've been friends for a number of years i sit on the committee for both the long island imagine awards and and the uh the newest new york city imagine awards and those are awards programs uh, recognizing the sector but kind of back to the vanguard story i started joining boards I started looking at people who were supporting the sector. I started learning about the sector. Um, and my partner, Ed, actually sits on the board of several nonprofits as well. He's actually the president of the Bayside Business Association in Bayside, Queens, where I sit on the board. So, again, same thing. We're very involved. Um, I'm, you know, I'm finishing up my work with uh, back. I say I go to school on Thursday nights, but I'm in class with the Institute for Nonprofit Practice. So it's all kind of spun around. And. I continue to get deeper involved in the work that nonprofits are doing. Mark, I don't even know if you realize this, but 36,000 nonprofits operate in the five boroughs of New York City. 36,000. Yeah. Employing 600,000 people. Like, it's that's just the five boroughs of the city, right? So when I joke about it and I say, like, is the nonprofit sector important? Yes, it's integral. It is, it is a part of everything we do. You know, whether it be social services or companies as large as hospital systems like these are nonprofits or down to the grassroots nonprofit uh, that might be located in your community that's working to solve or impact the challenges around food insecurity or housing, mm. right? Homelessness. So um, so in that, because I don't really know how to do anything at a small level, I just know how to keep doing more and taking on more. We, we wanted to, when we were trying to serve this, we own a benefits agency. So we work with businesses and nonprofits as they're making their decisions around health insurance and ancillary benefits. We don't, we don't have to talk too much about that, but that's where we were looking to target this, you know, from a serve the sector perspective. Mm -hmm. right? And then exactly. that kind of transitioned into, you know, a lot of what I do myself by getting out there. I do days of service for nonprofits. Um, I, as I say, I sit on boards. I've been involved with some fundraising efforts and, uh, it, it really comes down to the fact that I, I had this idea where I said, 
Are you familiar with Gary V? Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Gary V, if you listen to Gary V and anybody out there listening to us listens to Gary V, they know he says things like, if you're passionate about a certain subject matter, you know, build content around it, do that. So for two years, I walked around and I said, I have this radio show. It never, I didn't have it yet, but I had it in my head. It was called Philanthropy and Focus and Focus was spelled with a P-H-O-C-U-S and it still is spelled that way. Uh, but in my mind, it was only that. It was, a, it was an idea for a program that didn't exist. And then... Um, January 8th of 2021, philanthropy and focus became a thing. And it became another way for me to serve the sector, serve the sector that I'm really focused on and passionate about. And it was a way in which I could say every week I will bring on an executive leader of a nonprofit to help them do two things, tell their story and amplify their message. And that's what I do every week. It's another nonprofit. I just got a, an email earlier from a woman who says, what, what do I need to do to get on your show? I want to come on and tell the story of my organization. Um, and it's pretty easy. We just got to talk to Tommy and I talk to him all day. In fact, I can't get rid of him. Anymore. <laughs> Every time I turn around, he's right there again. So I can get a meeting with him. So Roberta will talk. I'll, I'll hook the whole thing up. But the idea is um, I feel so passionate about the work done by these organizations that I want to help them get out there and tell the story, whether it be those who serve the mental health space, which is incredibly important to me, those who serve the intellectually and developmentally disabled, which is incredibly important to me, uh, to those who are in the social justice conversation, which is, again, incredibly important. And I've been inspired by meeting so many leaders of nonprofits that I just continue to learn. And I know this, Mark, and, I'm, and you, you probably agree, but as I get older, I realize how little I know every single day. Where, you know, that thing in your 20s, maybe you thought you knew everything and real. I, you know, and I have children that are uh, 12, 11, uh, 9, and 7, and they know everything. So they'll, it'll take them a couple of years to realize they know nothing. <laughs> and it's funny, there was um, quite, quite a few more than a few years. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, I've only figured out for like the last six months that I don't know anything. Before that, I, <laughs> up until like 43 and a half, I knew it all. No, I, I, I you know, there is so much out there that we're we're not aware of, and and I just want to continue to grow. And I remember I'll tell you a quick story, and then I know you probably have a question or two for me because I hear my hear a lot of my voice. But again, I'm it, you know on my show I try not to hear as much of my voice, but this is your show, so I guess I'm the guy who's supposed to talk. More. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just I remember that I met this man. I, I was selling payroll at the time, and he was an attorney, might still be an attorney. This is a number of years ago, and I was in. Um, Richmond Hill, Queens. Um, if you're listening internationally, Queens is uh, one of the boroughs of New York City. But I was out there and I said, uh, I'm talking to this man. He goes, you know what scares me, Tommy? He goes, there's so much I want to do. There's so much I want to learn. He goes, it scares me that I might not get to do it all. And I said, wow, what a what a thing. You know, he wasn't a, he wasn't of, of, poor, of poor health. He wasn't sick. He just knew he had limited time to do it all. So I have, and I don't know if it's a, if it's a tip of the hat to this man or not, but I always say, look, at this point in my life, I, I'm pretty confident I got 50 years left. And it's right. what am I going to do in these 50 years to make an impact, to add value, and to have some level of legacy? And uh, I met, um, oh, God, his name just escaped me, but he's written all these books. John, um, oh, God. I'll think of it before the end, but he's written like 97 books. And I met him up in Utica, New York, and he's very well known for, for writing books on professional development and and um, kind of the growth and, and motivation. John C. Maxwell, perhaps? John Maxwell. Dr. Maxwell. I met Dr. Maxwell. Thank you. I met Dr. Maxwell, and at the time, he'd written like 97 books, and this is like 10 years ago, so he's probably written 200 books. But he's funny <laughs> because I met him. We had a nice conversation. And he said, you know, every day you got to ask yourself, how am I going to make an impact? Right. How am I going to add value? And that's what I try to do, Mark, is I try to figure that out. You know, I'm not saying every day is great and every day is perfect. It's certainly not. But it's about that. And, I, I, you know, you're familiar with when they talk about what what do you want them to say at your wake? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. So, yeah. So I think about that. I think about that not all the time, but I think about that in terms I want to go. He's a good guy. He had a value. He took care of people. He did the right thing. He tried to help people out because. If to say he, you know, I'd love him to say he had great hair. Now, if you're only listening to this, you're not seeing <laughs> that, but I do have great hair. <laughs> but but I, I would like, you know, I'd like them to say that, but I'd like really them to say, like, people were better off for having known this guy. And that's, and maybe that sounds like, like 
a little bit egotistical and maybe it is, but uh, it, the idea is I would want them to know like that people were left better because of it. You know, they, they there's this old adage about, you know, leave things better than the way you found them and things like that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's what we're talking about. And in business, you get to make a decision of, and I didn't know this growing up, you know, I thought you had to just take on every client. And when you have a sales quota and you work for somebody else, sometimes you do have to take on every client, right? I got to hit a number. But when you are an owner and you're a professional, you don't have to work with everybody, you know, which is like a, sometimes I, and I hear people saying that more and more, but I think it sort of, sort of had turned business like on its ear in a lot of ways. Like people go, well, what do you mean? Well, no, if like, and I hear a lot of people that I network with go, yeah, I don't deal with jerks. And sometimes they'll use a more harsh word than that. Like, I don't work with people who are fill in the blanks. And it's, it's really a matter of being able to make that decision. And we decided, and a decision, you know, go back to like stuff I've listened to with Tony Robbins, but you know, decision is to cut off from any other thing, right? Like burn the bridge, burn the boats, burn the ships, burn everything, burn the bridges. But, but the idea is, we made this decision to work in this sector. So go to the nonprofit sector connector. It's a, it's a name I came up with. I like it. It's cute. It rhymes. But way before I was even involved with nonprofits, I was a connector. I would say Mark Bullock, Mark Bullock has this company, right? Here's what they do. They will help you do blogs and now they'll help you do video production. And, and then I would say, Mark, you need to talk to my friend, fill in the blanks. Here's what he does. You know, I think you guys have some, I was doing that. I didn't even know that was networking. I thought that was obvious. Mm. I was like a kid on Bell Boulevard in Bayside, <laughs> Queens, hustling payroll. And I'd be like, all right, you're an attorney. You're a CPA. I do payroll. Let's grab a banker and let's all sit down and eat like and talk. Like I didn't call that networking. I said I called it obvious, you know. So um, so when I, I've always sort of looked out sometimes to my own probably uh, – probably in, in the interest of others more so than myself in a lot of ways, I always look out to make the connection for other people, right? Which, you know, you can go to The Go-Giver, you can go to, um, you know, certainly a book, which I, I read a lot, and I'm, it's called Mr. Schmooze, which is uh, right up my alley, as you can imagine, because we, we're friends, so you know me a little bit. So I, I, I love that book, Mr. Schmooze. But, um, you know, Raving Fans is another one. It's, it's about, like, making an impact, adding value, and connecting people so people are better off. Right. I go, you know, as I think of it, and I didn't know I was going to say all this today, but, you know, Tom Hopkins used to have a thing where it was like, today I, I will meet the right people in the right place and under the right circumstances for the betterment of all. Do you remember that one? I, 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 what's what's fascinating to me, Tommy, is it's like, you know, you're li literally giving me the laundry list of all the books that I've read and all the authors that, that I've paid attention to over the last 30 years. What, so that's why uh, we're together. That's why we're here doing this together. Right. This is the law of attraction. You want to talk yeah. about another one. But this is us because yeah. there's this there's this uh, energetic situation going on in a conversation like this. And you and I know each other you know, through video socials. And, and I see you every Friday. But, yeah, that's it. Right. Like these are the things I used to have a thing <laughs> in my shower and it was like a Tom Hopkins thing that would hang around the shower handle. And it would say that quote that I today I will meet the right people under the right circumstance. So but that to me. So maybe I did know what networking was. Maybe I did know what connecting was. I, I think mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, the again, evolution and learning more about me and, and the nonprofit space. Now I just kind of not that I was using my powers for bad, but now I use them for extra good. You know, like I'll give you an example. If you want an example, obviously I'm just sure. gonna, I'm just going to keep talking. If I'd love, to, <laughs> I'd love to give you an opening at some point to get back into this conversation, but I, I promise I will. But I'll give you an example. Um, I sit on a board of an organization called Horse Ability, which is out here on Long Island, and they do equine therapy and hippotherapy with horses for uh, pe uh, veterans, people experiencing PTSD, and especially which is really a, a special place for me is individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The vernacular now IDD is uh, how we refer to that, group, the, that, um, that population. And I sit on the board and I was talking to my friend who's the executive director. And one of the things she needed was uh, a CRM, a customer relationship, client relationship management tool. And the big one is, is Salesforce.com as many of us know. 
And I have another friend who runs an organization called the Book Fairies. And I had, again, out here in Long Island, and I had just had a conversation with my friend at the Book Fairies about what an incredibly, uh, what an incredible transition they had made by implementing Salesforce.com for a lot of their processes, saving time, streamlining, increasing efficiencies, et cetera. So what did I do? We, the three of us jumped on a call and it was an hour long call just for them to connect and learn about this, you know, how this program impacted. And it was all giving by my friend Eileen from the book fairies to teach my friends at Horseability about this incredible situation. And that's what the nonprofit sector connector is. That's it. That's the thing. That's the, I would do that all the time. And I do do that all the time. I said, do do, but I, I would do that all the time. Like, and I, like, I loved doing that when it would be, you know, your partner Vic and like somebody who runs an attorney association, right. I would bring them together. It makes sense. It's like, to me, that stuff, I don't want to say it's instinctual, but to me, those things just were glaring in like, right. it's, it's like obvious. Like I have, I leave a meeting, I got two or three introductions for somebody because it makes sense. And I don't think I'm smarter than anybody. I think, I'm just more in tune to it. Maybe I put a little more focus in with a PH or an F, either focus that you want, but I put more focus on listening for those things to make those introductions. And then you bring it, you, you bring it or you bring it, but you bring it to the nonprofit sector. And for me, it's like, oh my God, look at how great this is. Now these two organizations are better off because they know each other. I mean, not even getting into the potential alliances of this program looks similar to that program of these two different orgs. Maybe there's something we can get together. I mean, depending on how deep you want to go in stories. I mean, I, I also sit on the board of an organization called the spirit of Huntington art center. They do incredible work and they partner up with a lot of these other organizations that serve that IDD population, as I talk about. So I want to give it back to you a second, because I feel like I've totally taken over and this is like, I'm like three cups of coffee in. So I'll, <laughs> I'll pause for a second and have more coffee. <laughs> Well, you know, the the thing that I get first of all, thank you, um, and and I'm I'm happy just to let you go because who you be, yeah, is a connector, right? right? You're 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 con you're connecting you're connecting people, and and I think and and I'm going to ask you in a minute. I don't want you to answer yet, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you in a minute. You know how that translates into now you have two radio shows, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, what what you're doing with that, and we know that it's going to have to do with connecting as well as as, as exposure. Um, but you hit a you, you hit a couple of words in in uh, as you were talking that really struck me. Uh, one is being of service. Right. So and, and the, the thing that I feel about you is that whomever you meet, whomever you're working with whomever you're connecting, you're being of service to them, right? So it's really of a mindset. So not only who you be is a connector, who you be is somebody who is of service to others. Yeah. Right? yeah. That is incredibly attractive to those of us that might want to do business with us or might want to be connected by you, right? Or might want to, or might want to be connected to you. Right. So um, when look, we what is was the old phrase? Uh, people don't love who you are. They love how you make you how you yeah. make them feel, as yeah. an example. Well, how you make them feel. What's underneath that is, is that who are you for them? Right. And and my perception of you is exactly why I created this podcast, Inspiring Business, because you can't help but be inspiring because you're all about inspiring others connecting others being of service to being of service to others yeah. so you know and there's there's just an amazing alignment just in the fact that we've 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 studied so much of the same yeah. as far as uh, as, per, as personal and professional development and leadership you know john c maxwell is, is one of the one of the premier guys in in, in leadership development um, you know, Tom Hopkins, for those people that don't know, is he, one of the original oldie. sales trainers. He's a goodie, right? I mean, Tom Hopkins, absolutely. You know, absolutely. he goes back yeah. and like I caught him at the tail end. You know, You're, the funny thing about Tom Hopkins, what I always love this story is he goes, I sold 250 swing sets in my career. 
You know what also came along with him? The house. And I love that <laughs> joke because, you know, and I, I learned the old, and I don't know how much of that plays well anymore because I think that that old school salesmanship stuff is, I don't want to say it's dead, but it's different. You know, there's, yeah. you know, the, the playing yeah. field between the, the prospective client and the salesperson is, 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 is way different with certainly with the yeah. internet and whatnot. But the, the stuff I can go back to is, you know, it would be things like, um, well, uh, does it come in red? Well, would you like a red one? And it would be like basically, like I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll, make it, I'll make it red, man. Whatever you need, like, you know. But like I loved all those guys, and you, you know, I, I think um, you know you, what you're saying there about being of service and being a connector. Um, yes, thank you. I appreciate all those compliments, and um, I will tell you though, there's some level of that that becomes. Um, challenging is a way to say it like um you know my sister is a psychologist and she'll talk about you know things in terms of like overhead and i tend to sometimes say you know there's a limitation on how many more people i can actually meet because (laughs) there's a limitation on how many people you can serve so it's like you you know and i've gotten better in this calendar year 2022 with saying no to more things but I was never really good at saying no to anything. So it, you know, that that. So if you're if you need so if you need somebody to serve on your board or help out, I guess email me because I, I like to do it. it. It's it's funny, but I think the, I think that what that comes down to is it's it's uh, it's growing up a bit, right? It's maturing, and it's also mm-hmm. having the right team around you too. Because like I could put people around me to do things that I make I might get pulled into. But I want to go do what Tommy D does all day. Like I want to do that, like all day or as much as possible. So, you know, it's it's kind of out outsourcing or insourcing or partnering or teaming up. And I remember a conversation. I actually brought it up to somebody yesterday. Actually, somebody you and I have in common. But I remember a conversation we had with being the starter versus the finisher or the starter versus the doer. Talk to me about that because I think I think I have the terms wrong. But I know I'm like I come up only like twelve ideas a day. So, but right. it's implementation. Talk about that for a second. So, um, Jack Canfield uh, wrote a book, Power Versus Force, years ago, and one of the main uh, or one of the concepts that I really pulled out of that was this whole concept of: Are you a starter or are you a finisher? Now we're all somewhere on that scale, mm-hmm. and there's no such thing as a pure starter or a pure finisher because then a, a finisher would never get out of bed, and a starter yeah. would never get anything done, right? So, so it's a, it's a um, spectrum, but, right? It's like so some- it's a, exactly it's it's a spectrum. Those of us who are entrepreneurs, those of us who are uh, creative types, those of us that are um, uh, inspired by what's possible, are tend to be tend to be starters. And we find the uh, the challenge in crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and you know, getting the to do list done, and may, maybe even creating the to do list in the first place, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh man, so, I gotta write all this stuff down, Mark. I gotta like write it down. Can I just tell somebody and they can write it down? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you know, so who are finishers? Well, we you know, we starters need finishers in our lives because otherwise, we're really going to be challenged with getting anything done because. The finishers are the CPAs. They're the bookkeepers. They're the you know they're the administrative assistants. They're the they're the they're the, they're the and some of them are business owners, right? And 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 they're coming at it from a perspective of they get you know juiced by See, getting that, that to do list so marked off. If they get off. juiced, if they get juiced about the thing, and I'm telling you, this is maybe a year ago. <laughs> you and I had this conversation, and I. I know that that's the answer is like not to do the stuff that you hate doing and or you suck at, right? Like I know that's the right answer, but that's not everybody. Most forget most people. Not everybody sees the world through that lens. Like right. I'll, I'll, just a quick anecdote: when I worked at ADP a hundred years ago, they were like, "You go to as a salesperson, you go work your CPAs, you go work your banks, you work your clients, and your prospect." And they would say, "If you suck at one of these things, work at it and get better." That's like old school thinking. Like that's like mm-hmm. that's not a slight at ADP. That's just what the what the the, the concepts and, and leadership, thought leadership of the day was. We'll work on that. Right. Well, no, don't work on my opinions. Don't work. I would and I was a rebel, and as that might shock a lot of people listening, but I was rebellious. And I, I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it, Mark. I don't want like a kid, right. but like honestly, like with a limited amount of, of life and a limited amount of time in each day my opinion on this is don't do the stuff that you don't want to do again 
with a level of responsibility, right? Like have the things get done, but have them get done by somebody, as you just said, who gets juiced about it, who's like fired up to like put a slash through there or their digital, their digital uh, checkbox on a, you know, on whatever app they're using. But like that then empowers the starter to just think about cool stuff, man, and come up with other ideas. Like I have like five things I want to do, like new, totally new things like right now. And my biggest downfall is I need somebody to to kind of do the thing to like do get, not that I don't want to be on the meetings and do, but like, if it's a piece of like, if I want to do one of the ideas I want to do is, uh, well, I won't go into it, but you know, I might need a piece of property for it. I want somebody else to go out and find the 10 properties and bring those down to the three that we'll talk about. And then we'll do, then we'll go in, you know, like that. And somebody would love that. Somebody would love the level of detail that that would take. It ain't me, babe, (laughs) but some, you know what I mean? And that, and that's just like a, you know, an example of what I'm thinking about. So I, I, that, you know, power versus force. Who was it again? Canfield. Jack Canfield. That's the one. He's the, uh, you know, the cup of soup, not cup of soup. What was that one? Uh, um, chicken, uh, soup for the chicken, soul. chicken soup for the soul. Yeah. A whole bunch I of used different. To, yeah. Used to yeah love he's, he's another one of those very prolific authors. So I, I'm, I am good. So I could literally go on all day with this stuff and I know that you could do the same, yeah, but I, yeah. th- there's, there's two things that, that I need to do before, before yeah. we close up today. The first is in two minutes or less, what are your two radio shows? And, and, and how do people get access to them and, and why should they pay attention? Why should, right. why should they? In two minutes or less and yeah. begin. All right. So, so philanthropy and focus is uh, we do it live. It's a live radio show every Friday morning from 10 to 11 Eastern standard time. And uh, it's on talkradio.nyc. And as I said earlier, two, two things we do every week, it's a new executive director or CEO of a nonprofit to help them tell their story and amplify their message. Um, you can check it out on uh, Facebook, Talking Alternative Broadcasting, and then talk uh, talkradio.nyc is the website. So it goes live, and then similar to what you did up front, it, uh, after it's live, it lives on Facebook, uh, lives on talkradio.nyc, and streams all over the place on the podcast platform. So it is, I say, it's like it is a radio show that turns mm-hmm. into a podcast. So I, I see those like uh, from Hamlet, or is it Macbeth? Mm-hmm. I see those three witches. Double, double, pull, bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. I see them. Mix, they mix up the radio show and then it turns into a podcast. But then funny or ironically, I'm doing that show for like six or seven months. My friend Valerie Heffron, who you should know, we'll talk about her in a second, but um, an incredible animal advocate asked me, as I mentioned earlier, to come on her podcast years ago. And I said, absolutely not. And I said, I don't want to mm-hmm. do it. I don't want to hear my own voice. Or, And I think what it was back then was I was more concerned, like I would, say things and they would be the wrong things but now i realize most of what i say is not correct the first time anyway so i'm not as concerned about that you know like i used to care like about like oh i might who cared you know what everything and i think we we learned that you know like we're mm-hmm. trying things you know we're but um and the, so valley calls me up she says tommy dia i think i should do a show again i want to do something and i said so let's do it she goes what do you mean i go well let's just do a show and so that show now started in September of last year, uh, 2021, and it's called PALS, which stands for the Professionals and Animal Lovers Show. And it is a challenging show for me because I'm learning every week. We do three things on that show. We learn, we educate, and we advocate. And I didn't consider myself an animal advocate. Uh, Valerie certainly says I'm an animal advocate. Uh, I'm just learning. I'm just learning about mm. feral cats. I'm learning about... Um, I'm learning about, I have a friend of ours, John D. Leonardo out here on Long Island, who, who deals with uh, helping uh, ducks and chickens and turkeys. And I'm learning about all these different things. We, we did a feature a couple weeks ago about rabbits and uh, fostering rabbits. And like, I saw a rabbit in my neighborhood the other day and I was trying to like check it out. Is that a domestic rabbit? Is that rabbit belong here? Do I need to call somebody in? Like, so I guess I kind of am becoming an advocate. So this is a long two minutes, Mark. But I, I, the same way you could check out that show, pals, you could check that out on talkradio.nyc and uh, also on Facebook. And I'm just having a good old time with it, man. Trying to make an impact. Like I said, trying to add some value. That's it. Outstanding. Outstanding. And so you're pretty much giving Valerie a, a shout out, but how can yeah. people find out more about that? Val- 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 yeah, I mean, you got to check in with our show. That show is every Wednesdays from 2 to 3. Uh, check in with Val and I, and we sort of have this really uh, – 
she's a good buddy of mine and we have this cute sort of chemistry you know um that we you know we play off of each other really well uh the guests are having a good time and and uh there is not yet a um a website put up for that but there is i will say, say that we have the compassion awards which is an awards program we're doing out on long island october 11th of uh of this year 2022 and it'll be held at a place called the refuge out in melville on long island so more to come on all that but just you know follow us we're on social media pal show p-a-l-s-h-o-w and I'm sure wherever people find this, we can share some more information and stuff like that at some point, right? Terrific. Absolutely. We will we will absolutely absolutely include links to everything that that, that you're talking about in, in whatever platform that this is posted on. So I, I did uh, just before we close up, I, I wanted to talk about because you've been involved with video socials for, for a while now. I have. And um and I wanted to talk just to take just a moment to talk about if you are somebody, you the, the listener or watcher, are somebody that wants to get content out there, but you need some help with it, or maybe you're you're not sure how best to start, or maybe you're uh, you're really really busy and you need other people to help with those processes. So, what am I talking about? We created more than a decade ago a service called phoneblogger.net. So if you're trying to write articles and then edit them as you go, et cetera, and it takes hours to produce something that takes three minutes to read. And because of that, it just takes forever to actually get anything done. And you can't do it consistently. Phoneblogger.net is for you. And that is the website because we have an editor call you, interview you for five or 10 minutes, and then we take over the rest. And that becomes you, you the author, are, have now created a blog article that goes out in newsletters, goes out to social media, et cetera. The extension of that or the next step of that was video socials. And video socials was how do you get two or three minutes of video talking about the same type of topics that you would talk about for any other blog post? Or maybe they're, they're frequently asked questions on video, as an example, for your website or other videos. So video socials is exactly that. It is a place where we get together five, ten people at a time in meetings on a regular basis and we take turns recording videos and we give each other feedback. Tommy's been involved with that for almost three years, I think now, yep. and uh, has done, I don't know how many dozens and dozens of videos that, that, that you've done for that. And as, as I think you can see through what, you know, Tommy's sharing in his experience, it's allowed him to, to, to come to a different level. Mm -hmm. He's always been a connector. He's always been of service, but now he's out there in the world of social media, in the world of radio, in the world of podcasts, etc. I think in part because of what became available through video socials. And then in addition to that, if you want to do what Tommy's doing and what I'm doing here, which is doing a video interview podcast or do live streams, things like that, but maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe you do know where to start and you're doing it now, but it's logistically, it's a lot of work and, and, and you'd like some help with that. We have our video socials VIP services, which is videosocials.net forward slash VIP service and check it out. And either way around, we'd love to, to, uh, to get to know you. If you've, if you've seen this, leave a comment below, et cetera. Tommy, I, so much appreciate having you on today. Um, obviously, we're in alignment in our in, in our desire to to want to help others. My personal mission statement is is I help I make a difference for those who make a difference in the world. So I feel like that I'm kind of been fulfilling that with people like you because you're making a big, a big difference in the world, and I think maybe what we do is help facilitate that a little bit. Well, I think it certainly has. And I, I look, I call you the professor kind of as a cute tongue in cheek thing, but I, I, I say it because I learned a lot from you, you know, specifically about when, I, when we do the videos and look, just to, you know, not to make a whole big commercial, but I will tell you, I mean, I don't miss that meeting. I don't miss my 11 o'clock Eastern on Fridays because those are my people, you know, my video socials meeting that is, that's my crew. You know, we get together. There's some of those people I know in real life. Some of those people are my friends and I never met them in real life, which is a whole nother, we could do 45 minutes on that with that, how our lives have changed in that regard in the last couple of years. But, uh, 
you know, you certainly have made an impact because I learn a lot. Like I pay more attention to my lighting. You know, I don't know who's listening to this and who's watching this, but if you watch this, it looks like there's a puppet show going on behind me because I got these big old black curtains to to get rid of the the natural light. And that's stuff that, that I got feedback from you and that I got feedback from, you know, the folks who are who are in our group. And it's it's very supportive. And I will tell you, um, I understand why, you know, it can be scary to do this type of stuff. But I mean, you know, your partner, Vic, who I know a long time, uh, said a number of years ago, and you and you say it all the time, too, is this is the way you have to get out there, you have to be doing video. I mean, I get you don't, I always, I always correct myself, you don't have to do anything in life, you don't, right. But if you want to advance your brand and advance the marketing and, and have that rapport and that connection with prospective clients, prospective partners, you got to start putting stuff out there. And I mean, it's been a, it's been a boon to me and my brand. And uh, I know at the very least that piece of content's going out there every week, you know, on top of the shows, et cetera, but it really supports. It's a nice supportive situation between what I do with video socials and what I do with my programs. So thanks for having me here today, man. This is fun. Out, freeze on my screen. All right. I appreciate this, Mark. Right. Thanks so much. Thank you, man. You have a great one. And uh, all the links, we'll have links uh, uh, tied with these, uh, uh, where they're posted out there with uh, your your two radio shows and, and your nonprofit sector connector. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks, man. Talk Take to care, you soon. Buddy.